Um, okay, right, so we're coming towards the end of your, your week back here in the UK and in the northeast. How's it been for you? It's been great, uh, except for this weather. Yeah, literally, in the last couple of days, um, you know, I, th I think that I think that sunshine has promoted, you know, a, 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 a great festival of rugby. People have been out there supporting. Uh, I, I think that the, the winner so far has been the minnows of world rugby. You know, really contributing you know, well to this World Cup. You know, really getting it going. Obviously, the Japanese victory over. Uh, South Africa early doors was was something to see, and then you know, the other teams have have, have got a bit of um, uh, a bit of confidence out of that victory as well. So all of a sudden, um, all these teams are getting you know great support from the from the locals, and everyone's out you know chasing rugby, which is fantastic. So um, the last week for me has been brilliant, and then uh, you know to come back up to Newcastle and play in the uh, the Legends game, um, I, I was actually uh, I was surprised how how much contact I took. Um, I pinged my hamstring and I hurt my ribs, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I actually feel okay. I thought I would have got, I thought I would have been worse, but um, what a great way to uh, to express rugby in the northeast as well, back at Kingston Park, and, and just good crew. Um, you know, it was a, I keep saying to everyone, it was a, it was a great training run for people to come and watch. You know, um, uh, Nooney in his defence was outstanding. Tommy May just energetic. Uh, Peter Walton um, running around like a spring chicken and just understanding where where space was where where time was uh, on the pitch there and it was great to see um you know so there was uh, there was lessons learned and there was the small matter of a world cup match trekking on last saturday were you down for that game i was down for that game i left on the saturday morning after the uh after our game and um uh, and saw i saw a game where uh, england were blown off the park uh you know there, there's and you feel a bit sorry for them you know the way they've been uh you know sort of Put under the spotlight or the microscope, you could sort of say after that uh, defeat. Uh, tough one because Australia played so well. Um, you know they play with they play with speed, they play with precision, they play with power. The scrum was great. Uh, you know it, it laid a platform to actually start to play the game. Um, Foley was outstanding. Um, Falau didn't get into the game. You know so all of a sudden you got these you know attacking weapons that uh, you know sort of you know weren't on that stage. Uh, but Foley was was uh, sublime, you know, kicked his goals, guided the team around the park and, and really put pressure on. So uh, a tough one to England to take, um, you know, no doubt they'll, they'll feel the repercussions, you know, you know down the track. Um, has, it, uh, has it affected the, the, the whole tournament with the host, uh, you know, going out of it? Um, looking at now and going into the sort of, you know, quarterfinals end of the tournament, no, I don't think so. And because, you know, Ireland is still there, Wales is still there, Scotland is still there. So um, all of a sudden, there's still interest in around Europe from from that point of view, but uh, yeah, sad day for England rugby uh, not being at the uh, at the business end, and certainly some questions will be raised. And how important is it for Australian rugby? I mean, there's been well documented reports about you know struggling for attendances and things like that. How how much is the getting through in the knockout stages, and as you say, the performance a shot in the arm for it? Yeah, it, it has been, and, and more so in the more so in the way that the public has uh, um, perceived the team now. So, you know, the, the, there, was, there was infighting in amongst the team there and, and uh, it, it just didn't seem like a nice place to play. Uh, you now it's your job, but it seemed like, you know, these guys were really sort of, you know, not liking, not enjoying what they were doing. Uh, new coach, new attitude, new pride in the jersey, new pride for um, the supporters to, to come and come and watch. They had the success in the rugby championship this year. They had the win over South Africa with a you know a, a, a courageous you know kick for touch and and, and, and line out scoring the try. Um, they then go to Argentina, win over there, great win in Sydney, and um, you know players are players are starting to stand up. So yeah, you're right. It's 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 something that rugby needs. I mean, uh, rugby on the world stage is is, is I think in great shape. Um, yeah, but uh, for that to go well. Uh, you know, on on the world stage as well. Australia needs to play well. You know, they're one of the big nations. They won the World Cup twice, so they need to be competitive. And, and they get getting back to that stage there. You can't forget South Africa. You know, they're playing well after that hiccup to start with. New Zealand. You know, uh, is everyone worried about them at the moment? Um, perhaps you know, with their performances, but you know, in the back of their mind, not really, because they can play. Obviously, they're the best team in the world. Uh, Ireland, uh, loving the way they're playing. Courage from Wales in the way they played. France are just ticking along, you know, they, they, they could be that smoky, you know, like they were a couple of years ago um, in, uh, in 2011. So uh, all of a sudden, it, it's probably the widest, you know, World Cup we've seen for a while. But from, purely from an Australian perspective, uh, it's great to see these guys playing, playing a good brand of, of rugby. 
and as a final thing you've been down here at the fan zone doing a quarter to coaches and doing some of the community work with uh, with some of the junior clubs throw back to your time when you were when you were here at the Falcons as a player it's good I, I, I enjoy I enjoy coaching the kids because you know one they're they're, they're raw um, they, they won't sort of talk back to you too much I love how they ask questions as well though uh, but the same thing is you know and, and as, I, as I said to these guys tonight uh, the first thing is is you've got to have fun and, and having fun is about doing the skills well and, and that's why every place I go to I teach the kids about you know having fun and that fun you know, rubs off by by passing well understanding how to pass well how to run how to pass how to tackle and and if you get those basics right uh, basics right uh, it just holds you in, in good stead for when you play rugby and, and at whatever level you're going at I did a thing today with uh, Serene McGeekin and, and he spoke about world-class basics and and which is so true and he talks about that at, at the lines level and you know it, it's not only goes for the professional players it goes for the amateurs you know it goes for the new guys coming into it so if you learn the basics and you get that part of the game sorted that's how you have fun and it was great to see these guys you know change your attitude tonight a little bit um, uh, we asked a few questions and they were able to get a few things still plenty to work on but we had the coaches here as well and um, yeah, they're great. They're, they're asking questions the whole way through. I mean, you've got to remember that this was this was my job. So, what I what I spoke about and what I did sort of came naturally. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you're, you're throwing too much information out. But uh, the guys are good today. They took it on. They asked questions, and that's what that's that's all you need to ask.